So Justin, you've gone from fifteen pound an hour working in a butcher's to running a four million a year business. You're killing it on school. You're on this incredible community called Trade Launch. You're battling out for number one on the leaderboards right now. You're currently at thirty k new monthly recurring revenue added. How the heck did we get here, man? This is phenomenal. Man, I don't know how I even got here. I look back and it's easier to connect the dots and like, you know, making certain decisions that I didn't know and would, would benefit myself. But uh, if we if we take it way back, so um, I'm t- I just turned 26. Uh, my entrepreneur's journey started at about 20 years old. I was just ended university. I was, used to play a lot of football. Finished university, or sorry, finished high school playing football. Didn't really know what I wanted to do. Started kind of getting into like smoking weed and stuff. And just my ambitions just totally went downhill. I had a shoulder injury and I was like, what do I actually want to do with my life? And uh, I took a, I took a leap year, like a gap year, grade 13. And then I went to university just because that's what I would, should have done. You know, that's what we got to do to, to, you know, pay the big gut, pay the big dogs. So I'm there and um, just looking around and I'm like, this is not where I need to be at all. And I was taking psychology and I was just watching like self-development videos like Alicia Long and like Elliot Hulse and all these different guys on YouTube. That's when I would, my, all my time was watching that because I was like pretty like socially awkward. I was just like really in my head a lot and like I just didn't feel it right in my situation. So I was just trying to figure out a way to get out of it. I ended up moving out around the same time because even though I could have stayed with living with my mom, I just knew that like I was reading like Robert Bly and like, you know, looking into my masculine journey, becoming like a, a, a quality strong man. And I knew I need to start taking bigger risks and my situation wouldn't, w- would keep me here if I decided to stay. So I moved out, I actually moved out into my uncle's house, just like on the other side of the city. He went to Greece for a bit. So I was just paying his hydro. And that decision was the one, the best decision I could have made. And that's why I tell us to younger guys, like, hey, if you if you have a chance to move out, if, if the bills can afford it, you kind of get creative. And even if they can't afford it at first, you'll find a way to make it work. Um, and that's when my like my life started. I felt like I was like, hey, now I'm on my own. Um, and I, I was I remember I was working. I was bar backing at a rec, at the rec room. It's like a kind of sports bar. And uh, I, I'm driving to work one day, and I see this little like abandoned kind of shop. Like it looks like an organic farm market or something. It kind of looked intriguing. So on the way back from work, I stopped there and um, turns out it wasn't abandoned. The light was on. I walked in, this old guy's mop on the floor. And I felt like I was in a movie where I was like, the movie where I randomly asked this guy for a job. Like I just Bro, felt- you sound like this is in a movie. This is like your Mr. Miyagi moment. <laughs> and he's looking at me and I'm like, I'm asking questions. I didn't know it was a butcher shop. It was, I thought it was just kind of like more convenience market kind of thing. And uh, I'm just looking at him and I looked, he looked familiar. It just felt like, uh, I read this book called, um, uh, the, the way of the peaceful warrior. Oh, bro, I literally was just thinking about that. Like yeah. as soon as you said it at the gas station, I was like, it feels like that moment. 100%. So I was reading that earlier and, and I was reading The Alchemist and like the guy with when he goes to the gem shop. So I was like, this is my fucking time. And I just had a feeling and I uh, asked him for a job and it was funny. He's like, he's like, he's like, do you know how to uh, uh, debone a chicken? And I have no fucking idea how to debone. Sorry, I don't know I swear. I, I didn't know how to debone a chicken. Uh, but I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's like, okay, oh. like, come tomorrow and show me how you can debone a chicken and you have oh, the job. no. So I'm there. I'm like, yeah, I was actually here to buy some chickens. So I bought four chickens, uh, went home. I'm YouTubing it. I'm practicing. I had some of my friends over. They're like judging my skills. Um, and then I went back and I totally like messed it up. I butchered it. Didn't, you know, no pun intended. Didn't do it. <laughs> like, you know what? I like the heart. Um, you know, you can, you can grind. So grinding was just like getting scrap meat and grinding it for like the, the different restaurants. Oh, so you were like actually grinding. I thought you meant like, yeah, this guy can work really hard, but you were <laughs> physically putting things through a grinder. <laughs> so he grind in the back. So I started working there as Taz and Market. I started working their Instagram stuff and like, you know, using different things and learning to try to like build their business. Really didn't know much. Um, but I'm um, grinding, I'm grinding. And I'm noticing there's a lot of scrap meat that's getting thrown out. Chicken carcasses, the organ meat. So I was like, why don't we you know, sell this as dog food? So I started grinding up that and like started a different breed raw dog food. That was my first business. Um, nothing really happened there. I, I actually got a dog stick. <laughs> so I just didn't know what I was doing. So I was like, I'll put this thing down. Um, but uh, oh, you got to break a few eggs, bro. Yeah, a few eggs. So I was going door to door trying to sell this dog food because that's all, that's what I thought would be the best way to do it. Um, and that didn't really work out. So then I ended up get, still working there, but I got another job. I liked the door to door side. So I got another job for a window cleaning company, knocking on doors. And I quickly was like getting about 30 leads a day and like knocking three hours, like 30, 10 leads an hour. 
And um, so I was like, okay, like I like the door to door stuff, you know, I like business. And then I decided like, I'm going to go work for, I'm going to go go to the home service business where I can knock on doors and get, and get leads basically. So I joined this student franchise called Student Works Painting. They kind of teach you the systems, you can run it. Um, and then in our first year, we like beat the 40 year record. I uh, was just like business built, building a business in the summer. And I, I didn't know idea about business. I just knew how to like work, whatever. So anyway, that led to me leaving, starting my own company and, and hiring a bunch of my friends. And, and now we're doing about, yeah, about four million a year. I bought another painting business. And that's kind of where, where I've gotten. And I, li I like the story because it's like, I, I feel like a lot of guys sometimes get discouraged if they don't have the business skill. I never took business class. I didn't really, I'm not good with, well, I'm good with numbers now because I've been dealing with them, but at first I wasn't, um, didn't really know any of that stuff. So I just kind of followed my heart in a sense and it just kind of brought me to where I needed to go. So, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, if I'm understanding you correctly, it's like you got into the paint business, not because you knew how to paint, but because you're like, yeah, I like door-to-door -door sales. <laughs> yeah. And actually... The little business that was inside of that is like, I started watching like through the self-development videos, I found Wim Hof, um, you know, like the Iceman, like cold. Oh yeah. So this is like four or five years. Yeah. Four years ago. Um, I went and I, I bought his course and then I paid to go get his certification. So I went with Wim and we like hiked some mountains and did some cold plunges. So then I opened up a freezer in my backyard and started charging people 40 bucks to come in and pop in and out for two minutes. Then he hit. So it was kind of hard to, for people to share a bath. It was kind of a hard sell. Uh, yeah, there's, I was trying different things and, and, and all the things end up kind of being like the Defin Da Vinci effect where it's like, they all kind of worked out in some way, shape or form. Cold plunges help with the confidence, same with the door to door and then the skill. And, and, and even at the butcher shop, like I learned, like when you take out the garbage, you put the garbage bag back on the garbage bin, like the, the, the simple stuff that we can forget. We're thinking of Harmozy and school games and all these things and like numbers. Sometimes we forget to like do the laundry or like little things. Right. So I was really happy with how everything kind of turned out. Uh, during the beginning bro wax on wax off next thing you know you're like just business fighting all over the place you're like come on <laughs> <laughs> so i mean there's bound to be some pitfalls along the way of like starting a painting business when you don't know how to paint talk to oh. me about that bro so um <laughs> so i went out door to door and i sold 500k uh in like four or five months of just knocking doors I didn't know. And I was pre-selling because we have, we're in Canada. So we got winners. So I'd go to the winter, knock, 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 sell for like springtime. Um, and then we have like all this workbook. I have no employees. I'm like, holy shit. Oh, dude. Putting up uh, job ads. I, I'm getting my buddy teach me how to paint. Like I was, didn't even know how to paint really. Like I was pretty brutal. So I, I got, I got this beat up van. I hired this one guy as a production manager. I hired, I had, I had six crews. So like 12 employees. You know, I, I was running my, I decided to do a team orientation, which, you know, looking back, I'm glad I even thought about that kind of system, but I had a team orientation off Zoom and I have a picture of me with a bong with the Zoom on it. And I'm like in my tr like trap house with all my friends, like trying to run this business. And anyway, so the bit, the biggest pitfalls was just like biting off way more than I could chew, um, which was good because I just learned how to, you know, chew faster. But in the meantime, like I had to remember one day I, I wake up. Um, I just fired my production manager because he was actually like sleeping with one of the painters and that was a no, like, no, don't do that. So I, I let him go. I wake up in the morning, the van is stolen. All my stuff's in it. I got oh, Justin. So I got my Honda Civic. It has a spare tire on just the back because I never fixed it. Then one roof rack's broken. So I didn't take a 40 foot ladder that day. There's another picture he put up. I don't know if he did, but it's hilarious. And it's me holding my ladder through the roof drive. And, and all that was like, in the moment, it was shitty, but I knew that it would be a good story. And that's what I would kept talking about. I was like, this is going to be great. This is, I'm going to be telling this someday. And that's what got me through a lot of like the, the pains of business and the touch-ups and the client complaints and the people quitting and, and all of that. And um, I'm very glad I started my, my, my entrepreneur journey in like a boots on the ground business. Cause it's like pretty, it's pretty hard, man. Payrolls and all that stuff. Like it's not, uh, it's not glamorous. So. Sure. So I'm really interested that you were able to view your journey in real time in the context of like, this is a great story. And like a lot of the, the amazing entrepreneurs we've had the chance to talk to, you know, they'll say similar things. They're like, and I knew that this would be a keynote speech someday. And I knew that this would make it in my book. So it's like, where does that come from? Does it come from like listening and reading books like The Alchemist and like binging podcasts or like, I, I think so. That? Hearing, hearing of people's stories as they look back on their life and they have joy talking about all the hard stuff. Cause that's where like a lot of respect is built. Um, among people and, and, and if everyone had just an easy life, it wouldn't be as respectable. So but I'm glad I understood that because if I didn't have that frame, I would, I could have crumbled, right? I could have complained and be ungrateful. But, uh, I, I had a, also had a coach at the time and he was just saying like, 
man, this is a good problem. You know, you got, you got 12 employees, you got to manage. Oh, boo hoo. Like, it's a great problem. These are all good problems. So you want, to have, you want me to take these problems away? It's like, no, I'll take the problem. So that kind of frame helped a lot. Sure. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, I think one way to view entrepreneurship is basically just like, it's solving problems, right? And <laughs> you had so many problems. So it's like, you know, like there's a great like kind of Japanese Toyota lean manufacturing philosophy that's like, be happy when faced with a problem. Mm. And it's like, the more problems you have, it's like, it's great. Like the, the stronger your business is going to be. And it's yeah. interesting, the business that you run now and the school community that you run now, it's basically like taking all of that pain and just packaging it up and solving it for every single tradey who comes through your course, every single business owner who comes through it. Yeah, 100%. So talk to me more about the problems. Like let's, instead of the value stack, like give me the problem stack. Okay, so let's let's go into this. So I hired my second uh, my second production manager was my roommate. Um, he was working at a factory, making about fifty k a year, and I was like trying to poach him because he was a stud. He played football. He's a hard worker. He's into self development. Really jacked. I was like, dude, you could just need to channel this. So uh, I took a while to convince him, but I was like, I guarantee if you work with me, you're gonna make a hundred k. And I was like, that's a big promise. You <laughs> double or nothing. Yeah, definitely. so we started on like door to door sales, shaky at the beginning. And then he got into like how we set up and qualify estimates. So they're more likely to book on the day, how to sell the quotes. And then over time, how to, how to translate those into production management and tell him the, tell him the framework. And, uh, you know, a problem is like hiring your best friend. Like you guys butt heads, you have these crazy big blowouts and these awesome, like get back togethers and like, you know, so, so it, it's a, it's a, it was a problem, but it was also the best decision I could have made. And he's still here to this day. He actually gave, he has equity in the company now. We're, we're co-owners. Um, and we're really scaling this thing. The goal is scaled to the moon and we brought other friends on. So it, it, the headache and everything, you know, he actually, so, so two weeks later, so this is the year before I hired him. I was my first year where the van got stolen. Um, I got the van back two weeks later. We, I got called the police and everything. I didn't have any insurance either. I was super embarrassed on that. I didn't have, I just didn't know what I was doing, man. I was just starting to run a business out of nowhere. <laughs> so I, we had to go kind of hunt it down. There was this big Facebook trail of people taking pictures and talking about it in like our community and Facebook. So finally found these guys in like a local city near us, got it back. There's like, there's a, I have a funny video on my Instagram. It's like me pulling out these heroin needles and like porno tapes and like all this like Chinese counterfeit money from this van. And, uh, Pressure wash, it cleaned it out, bought the van again. The next year, about the same time, I gave the keys to my friend now because he's the new production manager. Stole it again. What? Stole it again. Dude, it gets stolen again. So then I give him my truck. So I give him my truck because I was like, we need to manage production. This is all I got. Uh, I give him my truck. And I'm at this like award ceremony for the, this franchise I was in, just kind of telling about problems and stories just like this. And I'm on stage telling about how I got the van stolen and it's funny we got it back. And then I leave the thing, get a call. Hey, bro, the truck stole it too. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I have so bought a new truck and whatever. And I, in the moment, I I, uh, I was mad, but I was also trying to be understanding of like, look, I can't get that, that mad at this guy because I also had it happen to me and it's a human error. But if that truck goes missing a third time, like, you know, there's something dodgy going on. <laughs> People just say Michigan and stuff. I'm like, dude, we just lit, like, we're just in a, a ghetto spa downtown. Like, that's what it is. And I think he left the keys in and unlocked. So it's like, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, you know, these things, these things tend to happen, don't they? Yeah. So at what point do you start to like really systematize your business? You know, cause you know, we can only really scale to the level of simplicity in our business. And so I'm sure, you know, you kind of hit the glass ceiling like multiple times, but like, was there a moment where you kind of felt like, Oh, bingo, it's finally starting to work. Yeah, I would say that was this year. Well, that's like bingo, it's really starting to work. Like we got six estimators now, so sales are just way different um, and, and how things scale. But year, every year we've grown 100%. So we went from 500K to a million to 2 million to four. And the goal is let's keep going until we like, you know, break. But uh, <laughs> we're, we're thinking, okay, now it's going to be the 20%, whatever. But every year, like the first year, the focus was like the sales. Like I want to learn how do I sell at like a high closing rate? Because most guys in the industry, they sell about 30%, maybe. They email their quotes. They put up generic like everyone else. They promise all the same things. So oh. I, I started thinking like how can we pre-qualify these estimates so when I get there, they're already pre-closed. They have a soft committal. You know, both homeowners are there. They have an expectation of how the quote's going to go. I can write it up in my car. I can close on site with a nice little booklet about us. And like that, that kind of stuff is what I want to do first. And so sales was like pretty simple. We could scale that. Um, I got all my leads door to door. I hired students around me, um, different ways we, we, we recruit students. I would train them. And that's when I started building trade launch on, in my first year, because I was like, I want to have all the door to door stuff. Like 
instead of me having to go train them, like I could just get, send them to a module. And I used to be on Kajabi and, and they can kind of watch through it and then they can go out and I saved me some time. Um, and then, yeah, as we had, I would, I would train door to door reps. I would then find the best couple guys and I would start teaching them how to set up their own quotes, how to go and close. So soon I had guys that were getting their own leads and selling their own leads, which I was like, that's a cool system because most contractors, they dread trying to find an estimator because they don't have the lead flow. And estimators are like, man, like I'm trying to, they my family here and you're only giving me three leads a week. But when you start them out getting their own leads and then they progress into that, they're grateful if you give them an extra lead because they're just getting right. all the reward. So that was a cool thing that have we had going. And then the next year was really focused on production, getting site supervisors, not just hiring students because that's all I knew. Um, you know, hired professional people. Um, and then the next year with getting an admin and operating in systems and really making the sale that the production handoff so smooth that I, I could have an estimator sell it, not talk to me and the sales, the production manager knows exactly what's going on. Um, so every year things just kind of broke and then things fixed and broke and fixed. And right now we have problems it's with production scheduling. It's like pretty, pretty intense when you got all these crews and like color matching their skill set. This guy can use a 40 foot ladder. This guy doesn't like height. This guy here, this guy here, this guy here. Um, you know, so it, that's a new problem that we're, that we're finding that we're working on right now. Uh, so we're always, you know, obviously trying to learn and grow, but. Absolutely. I was watching your school about page and I kind of had the sense and I, I, I preface this by saying like, I mean, this is like the highest compliment ever. It kind of felt like to me that like you have gone and built the operating system for your own business. Yeah. You're now offering other people who work in the trade industry to basically just like take that operating system and run it. I was like, dude, this guy's like the Ray Kroc of trades. Like he's literally found a way to like McDonald eyes, like this very traditional boots on the ground, complex, like, you know, octopus tentacle sort of industry. And I was like, this is insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I give it to all the coaches I had. I bought in so many different programs, like tons of different guys, work with the franchise, like all these systems are out there. Like I didn't just there's some things like created or tweaked or like add in, like they use this tonality when you go to say this word or whatever. But like most of it was just like taking these different systems and that just whatever worked for me using. Um, I don't know. It's above my pay grade to say I made all these things, but it, it was <laughs> gathered along. Bro, it's whoever can organize those things are, are the people that win. And that's one of the things that I think is so cool about school. You know, it's not just about the the guru it's like how do you organize all of the collective wisdom into the one place you know and i mean it seems to be working for you guys really well actually i want to want to dive into like one little tiny tactic you know obviously your your school group right now it's um it's 999 or 997 per month 999 999 per month yeah. and i feel like you know for someone you typically work with guys who are doing like maybe like 200 250 300 plus a year some guys are a mill, two mill, because they want to just come in to learn the door to door. That's like a big thing. I'm kind of known in the space as like a door to door guy. Um, but yeah, yeah guys are around. Like I'd say if I have average is like 650k, they want to hit their first million, and they're wearing all the hats and they like they're hanging the string of their whatever, trying to get this done. So yeah. So I mean, some of the things that you teach are are insane. I did a little bit of digging and I found one thing, and I was like, dude, that alone is going to make people a lot of money. And it was like a certain clothes technique. Where it's the classic, like, oh, you know, can we have 24 hours to think about it? Or, you know, my husband needs 24 hours to think about it. Like, how do you handle that? Because I think that's super cool. Yeah. So I, I don't know if this is what you're talking about, but yeah, we offer it at same day instead of, um, so we give a 10% discount on the day of the estimate. We make sure before we get there that they understand that. And, you know, if the price makes sense, if you trust we'll do a good job, are you guys like, you know, opposed to looking at scheduling? They say no. And they're like, okay, cool. So anyway, I go there, uh, walk around with them, go and present the estimate. And let's say they need to think about it. Um, there's a lot of things first I would, I would ask, like, and I would ask in a very curious tone, like what they need to think about more so I could help understand and like maybe give them some more information. Um, and then once the smoke screens up, if it really just is like, we just need to talk it over. Um, I, instead of me leaving and going home and hoping that they call me back, which they probably won't because they're going to get buyer's rewards before they even bought the thing. Um, <laughs> I'll just say like, I usually just say, hey, no problem. Like I got a couple of calls to make. I can just step out for a second, give you guys time to chat. And then I can like come back in five minutes. And um, I know I, I said that this is a 24K job. It was like the biggest job I was going to sell. I was sweating in my car, writing it up. And uh, they're like, you know what? Like we like, you know, let, just stay in the living room. We're going to go in the kitchen and chat. And um, me saying that created the frame of mind for them to take that. Because sales is leadership. We got to lead them to where we want. And um, and, and so then they, they talked, they came back like, you know what? We like you. We'll go with you. And if I did, if I would have left and just gave them 24 hours, then I would have, you know, probably lost the sale. 
It's really interesting. And I mean, the reason why we love doing these podcasts is, is for the person listening who has just launched their school community or they are thinking about launching their school community. There's actually so many things that you've shared that are really, really applicable. Like seeing your story in the context of like a bigger journey. So it's like the van gets stolen. Something goes wrong with your social media. You know, name any problem that a school community owner might have. It's like, if you have that mentality where it's like, bro, this is just part of the story. I'm going to tell the story on a podcast someday. Or, you know, that that uh, close technique, that objection handle. And it's like, huh, how could I like work that into Zoom if I'm doing like high ticket closes on Zoom? It's like, could I like step into the waiting room for a few minutes or like something, something, something. So, you know, I, I just, I love zooming in on those kind of tactical things because I do think that in the specific, there are some cool universal things. How did you go about starting trade launch? And yeah. like that idea of like, now I'm not just going to run the business. I'm actually going to sell the shovel. Yeah. So, um, so let me think. So I started the trade launch. Well, it wasn't called trade launch. I started like internal trainings for my own guys. I wanted to I got door-to-door reps. I would hire them off Indeed in different ways. I would find coaches in universities near me and, and email them to get access to their sports team and offer a, a culture building type of job where they can compete with their friends and knock on doors and learn skills. Um, and then, uh, so I'd have internal trainings for that. And then once they, once people got better, I started building an internal training for sales. This is how you do this, this, this. Um, and then I just started adding like, like my Google Drive stuff into a certain folder. And then I moved it over to school. Um, and I, I thought, I saw that there was, I saw another guy that used to do painting that started selling courses. And like, I saw the red dress. I'm like, oh man, I'm here like scraping paint off a wall. Like, <laughs> I make a hundred ones and like do it, just click a couple buttons. Like what? This is so easy. So I always thought it was easy. I just started really building out everything I knew. Okay. This is how you recruit subs. How you recruit labor. So I saw you on board them as production manager. This is our culture slideshow. This is this, this is this, this is this. Um, this, uh, literally like, almost every day I'm, I'm thinking about what to add. I'm adding in a little file here, file there and, and messaging the Facebook chat. Just be like, Hey boys, like nothing new things added. But, um, yeah, so I, I saw the red dress and I really wanted to go all in. So, so it was really this year. Like I, at first I built a Facebook group to start building some traction with one of my buddies. He was saying, Hey, build an organic group, bring people in, start giving, doing some lives here and there, get a cut, kind of a culture going. And then I launched the program and we sold about 40 units relatively quickly. Like I would say about. Um, it was about five or six months and, and that was at a 8,400 USD to a high ticket for, for four months of, uh, of coaching and access to the program. Um, so then I was like, oh, this is great. This is awesome. And then all these fulfillments and this, and then my whole <laughs> business on trade launch. And I'm like, I have no employees. And I'm like, oh, what about my other business where all my boys are at? They're like, where's Geo? And, uh, so then I was kind of trying to ride two horses. So, but that, that's, that's how it started. And it's still pretty new. Um, one of the things is that I went to the scaling workshop with Hormozzi and, um, I, I brought two guys that are kind of helping with trade launch. <laughs> Dude, you, you like, you, you're pre-studying the school games. <laughs> it's like you're getting the early access class, then win the school games and then you'll get the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> the M day too. I, I bought it another day with my board. Nice. But, uh, I, and I'm there and I, and I put up my hand and I had this big question asked. I'm like, Mozi, like I'm talking to all your guys at acquisition. They're saying I need to pick one business. I'm like, you know, you did, you scaled your gyms and then started gym launch. Like I scaled my painting business. I started a trade launch. Like, what would you do in my situation? He's like, he drew this graph. He's like, um, and, and this is, this is personal for me. He just said like, you know, high ticket sales. If you're teaching what you're doing, it's kind of do like a graph like this. And he's like, painting business, boring, bigger money. Cause we're talking about like exiting and selling and how it's a bit easier to sell a painting business. If you're not the head of it, you don't have key man risk and these other things. So then my world got rocked and I'm like there, this is like a couple months ago. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm stopping trade launch. I went back, like, I totally said it, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> then I was like, look at the guys I have with program, all this stuff. And I was like, how can I, so then I started, I started watching uh, some different videos and I was like, hey, I'm going to make it, I'm just going to make it into a community, just $97 a month, da, da, da. And I was like, but there's so many pendings I called at eight grand that if I could have said it's 999 for a month, cancel any time, come, come in, you know, see what you like. Uh, so I just decided to I actually ask the question on the opening school games, like on April 2nd or April 1st. And then Carbozzi, he's just like, yeah, just why don't you switch it to 999 a month? Because it was like 1600 after the 2K down for the four months. Anyway, switched it, started calling everyone. And that's why the, the leaderboards popped up pretty quick. So a bunch of people that are like 10 grand, can't afford it. Thousand bucks, let's do it. Uh, so, yeah. Incredible. I love that you had built up the demand ahead of time. And that's that's a very, very, I think, 
if someone's really studying this and they really want to learn how to win the school games, it's like that right there is the blueprint. It's like stoke the demand like crazy. And then when you open the gates, like the flood's going to come. Yeah. And, I, and I'm excited really now because uh, right now I'm doing 999 and then it, they get four coaching calls a week for different things. Like one of them is they can bring their door-to-door reps on that I help them hire. And then I, my, me and my door-to-door manager, we do like drills practicing to really get them wow. ready to go. I have a bunch of other calls, sales clinic, lead clinic, mindset. But that's where the 999 guys now. So I was like, hey, if you're paying 999 a month, you got access to the program, all the stuff I'm adding to it. I got a bunch of coming soon modules as well to kind of keep the, the retention there. And then they can come to the to the calls. If they don't want to come to the calls after the first month, they just want access to the course, it goes down to 97 a month. And then that way, you know, it's really little fulfillment for me. So, but if they decide, if they're doing 97 a month and then they decide to leave and want to come back into the program, they got to pay the 999 starting right. Very so good. Very sticky. I like that. Yeah. And the goal is to get it. I really believe the goal is to get just 97 a month or maybe 197 across the board with a couple calls a month. That way I can really focus on my painting business, grow this thing to 10 million and then have way more stuff to share and kind of create this into a community of like, come along my journey with me as I scale my business right. rather than like I'm teaching you and I'm the coach and the guru. Um, so that I'm, I have all these ideas and I hopefully, you know, get in the top 10 so I could go to Go up there and ask these questions to Sam and ask these questions to Mosey and kind of network with the guys and see where the best road to take this is. Super cool. So, I mean, like, why is school working for you? Like, why do you enjoy the platform? Because, like, as you say, like, you've got a four million year patent business. You can scale out to 10 million. You can probably exit that. You know, all these sort of things. It's like, why has this red dress been uh, mixed metaphors, but sh- so shiny that it's pulled you in? Oh, bro. School is like, and especially the community aspect, like the high ticket was, was definitely a, a attractive at first. I was like, oh, instant money, you know, that's like three paint jobs. Like just do it, you know, it's like sticky, whatever. Um, but now that I see like more of the community aspect, uh, that is where I'm like, wow, this is so cool. It, if it's low barrier to entry, especially too, which is where I want to get to, um, you know, it's just really cool. People can help each other. It's like the, everything kind of comes together in the community. And it's, it's a thing. It's very sticky. People will just stay, especially if you're doing value. It's like, ah, 97 a month, like, you know, whatever, like, let's keep, keep staying. Then it's reoccurring and it's reoccurring. And one sale is, is forever. If you, if you have the value, which is in painting, one sale is really done. You don't paint their house every year. You, you paint maybe once every 10 years. Right. Um, so that alone, but also just the program of how you, everything's so easy to use. Uh, everything's in one, the calendar feature, the classroom, like making a class on school is, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. I love going to Canva, making my thumbnail, putting it on, <laughs> click it on glue, recording, and then it's boom, paste done. It's like so simple. It, it really allows you to like dreamers to just create right away instead of having to plan all this out. It's like the speed is so important. And then you can refine it over time. That's one thing if people are thinking of starting school, it's like, just make whatever is on your heart, just make the content, po- put it out there, bring, bring some people in maybe for free, get some feedback, make it better, but have something, just, just make something so it's there. Even if you don't have any members, just make kind of what you think looks cool and, and try not to overanalyze it. Um, and then some people and t- people typically will think it's way better than you think it is just because you see all your stuff all the time. So anyway, school is, is amazing. I'm so glad I'm on school. And I, when I saw Mosey come in, I was like, oh, this is, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Justin, that's awesome. I've really, really enjoyed this. And I know anyone who listens to this is, is going to have a blast as well. I guess like just as a final question for the person listening to this who maybe they, they have, can't figure out what their niche is. They're not sure. Like they really want to start a school community, but like they don't really know what the topic is yet. Ooh. Any advice you'd give to them on yeah. how to find that? Yeah, I would think um, what if you're reading any books, what are you reading about? Um, you know, what are you reading about? What kind of people do you want around you? Um, where do you think that you can actually genuinely help someone? And it could be in the in the strangest way. It could be fashion. It could be uh, mindset. And, and maybe you and just to run a community does not mean to, need to be. You don't need to be like the expert just to run a group. Like you can totally run a group of of what you want to be part of. Like what group do you want to be part of? Um, and and you can also find someone that you look up to and just DM them. Like who knows what could happen from that. Um, I would say just get started and, and let the niche kind of figure itself out over time. You know, I got started painting, never thought this would happen, but it started getting traction. Um, so it's like, I think the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be. I would just, if you have any type of calling, if you love reading self-development books, create a book club or something in there where you you create you create a new summary of a book every week that you're reading or whatever it could be. There's 
so many things. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I wouldn't have this goal of making all this money right away. I just have a goal of creating a really cool environment that 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 people invite each other to. Um, that's just going to be by really looking deep inside of like, what does your heart, you know, actually want and, and where you think you can give value. And it's tough. It's going to be tough for sure. But I'll just try things out, throw stuff at the wall, see what sticks, um, and then go from there, get feedback. And yeah. And view yourself in the context of a story. Man, I love that. Absolutely. Well, I can't wait for you to hopefully win school games. Hopefully. Can't wait to see you make your way to Vegas. Let's meet Hermosi once again. Yeah. And my only request is if that happens, that you somehow find the time afterwards to set up your uh, your grinding community where you teach people how to debone a chicken properly. So you solve that problem forever. <laughs> we'll have to scale a dog food business. How you <laughs> sick. We'll see you in an ad someday. And it's like, there's a school for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, man, thanks a lot. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, if you want to check out Justin School, there'll be a link to uh, Justin School in the description of the video. It's also where you can uh, hop in if you want to join the school games and compete alongside uh, Justin and all the other awesome creators on the platform. Other than that, dude, thanks, man. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Thank you.